Barry, if you were to go into the past, any interaction you have with your parents or yourself, you step on the wrong blade of grass, you have no idea what the consequences to that could be. What you did was you changed the future and you changed the past. If a person is stupid enough to mess with time, what you eventually end up with is this. The multiverse. After an epic win by the Justice League, Barry Allen, a.k.a. The Flash, loses hope that his father will be acquitted from a crime he did not commit. With the consequences of the past looming over Barry's life, he runs so fast that he finds himself with the opportunity to turn back time itself. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Playoff News Podcast. I'm your host, Mark Rubicaba, joined once again by Mr. Abel Panetta. Today we'll be reviewing The Flash, directed by Andy Muschietti. What was that? Was that Lightning McQueen? Nah, that CGI was better. Ha! <laughs> Just kidding. Um, it's The Flash, of course, and here we are. Finally, man. Finally. Talking about The Flash. <laughs> I will say, this new era of movie yeah, does help us uh, review mo more movies that uh, we can watch at home because they come to uh, on demand much quicker than they used to. So that is very helpful. Yeah, uh, man. It was like months before. Uh, I know, like, right? It felt like years sometimes. Oh yeah, I remember how long it used to take for uh, DVD, uh, movie theater movies to come to like VHS. It used to take like a year sometimes. I, I would forget about it. I'm like, oh my god, it's finally Dude, out. Be crazy, mm -hmm. crazy long times. But yeah, I um, I will honestly say, other than maybe some wonky CGI, I don't know why people don't like this movie or why it didn't do well. Yeah, to me, it, I thought it did great. I mean, it was stylized. Like, there's a reason it was done this way. I mean, the CGI was stylized, just like the freaking movie. I mean, come on, what what else did you expect, you know? Yeah, and uh, I, uh, I I will not say that it is the best superhero movie in the world, like uh, some people predicted when uh, it was still kind of in uh, planning phases or, you know, before release, let's say. But it is a good superhero movie. And yeah, Sean Gunn and Tom Cruise. Yeah, Sean Gunn and Tom Cruise said it was the best. <laughs> But I could see why, uh, because it was a love letter to superhero movies, but it is also a bit of back to the future for superhero movies in a way that that uh, Endgame wasn't. And it was also uh, a bit of a last action hero for superhero movies in which the universe You know, is, man, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to agree there. Like, it, it did feel like that. It felt like... Um, it definitely felt like because of the way it was stylized, it felt more, more akin to, and it's gonna be terrible, um, uh, Joel Schumacher's Batman Returns, or what it was it Batman. It, it felt more like that, right? Yeah. Uh, am I crazy? More, more, okay. At least at the, the the beginning where we first meet the Justice League again, where it is a, a a very cartoony Saturday morning, like like time to save the orphanage, you know, time to save the hospital of raining babies. <laughs> Literally. Yeah, and I was at the edge of my seat where uh, Barry was trying to get that uh, that bagel made um, by the snooty uh, barista, you know. And uh, I was actually oh, kind of dude. mad he didn't eat that candy bar that that girl threw him. You know, I was waiting for him to go. Blomp. Yeah, <laughs> and, he hit him right in the helmet, man. And, and see his video game bar going. Because <laughs> you know this this game this movie. Yeah, actually, that was crazy. I was like, wait, what's happening right here? <laughs> but this movie is actually a lot of fun, and it and. And there's a couple actual paradigm shifts in this movie that make it even more enjoyable. Even to the end, I actually yelled at the screen when I did see this in theaters. At the end, I got, oh, my God. Oh, no. He went old man. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll get to that, though. Uh, but in a, in a way, you know, since I've seen it like a bunch of times, uh, I actually think it made more sense in a lot of ways. Um but this movie yeah. is has, has a very functioning Justice League to which Barry cleans up after uh, everyone's messes since he's so fast. And Batman is, uh, you know, kind of always at the forefront, him and Alfred being the big administrators. And uh, they're chasing one of Falcone's loser yeah. sons who uh, stole some sort of bioweapon from a hospital. And they blew up the hospital and it Flash has to kind of put it back together before it creates mass havoc. But he's <laughs> catching babies in the sky. Very... Uh, <laughs> it felt more like Sonic the Hedgehog. Eating a burrito mid-flight, and then <laughs> yeah, 
Dude, yes, that's what it was. I was like, I don't know why I was expecting uh, rings to fly off of him when he bumped into stuff. You know? <laughs> yeah, so he's fl- he's saving these babies as they're flying down. And I think a lot of people probably saw this wonky CGI and probably got turned off to the whole movie. And that's my theory as to why people didn't like it. But it was... You know, I got to agree. I, th- I, I saw that too, but, you know, I mean... The, like we just said right now, the, the moving parts, I think they were greater, you know, it, like, you know, this, that stupid sum analogy. I'm tired. Um, I know, right? I think that didn't do anything to, to harm the way this movie was made at all. If anything, I was just like, all right, they're getting, they're, they're getting a little creative. So I'm expecting a little more stretching of the imagination here when this movie starts to play out. And I'm like watching it going, ah, this is totally fine. Totally fine. But, in, you know, as, as the movie progresses, it does become more surreal. As uh, even the way it. Okay, so, you know, this is a time travel movie. Uh, if you ever do video editing, yeah. Barry was able to use his powers to scrub through time. <laughs> That's the best way that I could. Yeah, it was. Ana- which was pretty rad, man. Yeah, it was almost more like a you know time travel for a video editor's point of view. And the other movie that I was thinking this reminded me a lot of was Interstellar. Remember he was in the the bookcase? Yeah. And he was able to go Yes, back and he forth was in the freaking bookcase. Through the bookcase, but it was like it was time travel. Uh that's that's yeah, kind of that the was, world. That was crazy. He, he called he called it the Chrono Bowl. <laughs> you know, he was yeah, able to create bowl. the Chrono Bowl. But anyway, so uh, the Justice League. I was like, oh man, I need some chips and salsa. I know, man. Give you some chrono <laughs> diarrhea when you're done. <laughs> uh, but anyway. <laughs> anyway, so, so uh, the Justice League save yeah. the day from uh, this bioweapon taking off. And it's nice yeah. because Batman is out chasing the bad guys. The Flash is putting everything together and just as everything. The thing about Batman also is that he also is so great that his timing is perfect that just before he screws up, someone saves him. And and I've kind of noticed this in the... In the yeah, sni- like he is the only superhero. <laughs> yeah, who, who has, who has epic so timing. D- sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, no, what no, happened, I was like, of course. Of course this happened. Yeah, and much like the first time in the Snyderverse, uh, Wonder Woman saves him. Sorry, I'm late. And uh, we actually do see all of yeah, Wonder Gal Gadot. <laughs> yeah, I am Gal Gadot. Gal Gadot. I don't know. If, I don't know if the D tier is silent <laughs> or not yet. But I guess she's been you erased know, know, from man. time, so it doesn't even matter anymore. I am Gal Gadot. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, you know, they have a nice moment with Bruce uh, admitting, due to the uh, the lasso of truth, that he would never say uh, thank you because he has uh, too big of an ego. Um, and that's really yeah. the prologue, uh, which is funny because it, it actually shows a functioning Justice League because Superman is saving the world from a volcano, which Batman can't do. Uh, Aquaman, I guess, which is yeah. busy. I wasn't quite sure. Where, uh, but they, I know they, they did name drop him because it is uh, Alfred. The uh, Alfred, what's the guy who plays him? Jeremy Irons. Jeremy oh. Irons is Alfred. Guy who plays from, Alfred? Uh, yeah, Jeremy Irons, yeah, there he Jeremy is. Jeremy Irons from the Justice League, which I I liked. Um, and so the 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 then that's when the story actually begins. So the the Flash's main like superhero story is that when he was a kid, his yeah, just I get all these parents get their ki- uh, their parents murdered. Um, his mom was yeah. murdered, and his dad was framed for the murder. Right, and his dad is up for parole, and Bruce Wayne. Yep was trying to do some sort of digital uh, recreation of the... This happened yep. in the 80s or early 90s. I think it was the 80s. Of, of the scene. Like he, yeah, he, yeah, he was able to scrub the video and all this stuff. The, the security camera footage, and he wanted to recreate it uh, using digital bat technology. And unfortunately, uh, his dad ah. was wearing a hat, and he couldn't see his face because the beans were too high at the supermarket while his mom was getting murdered. So... He was so mad yeah. that, that the Batman couldn't restore the footage that he ran as fast as he can. He ran until his feet caught on fire, man. I'll tell you what. Uh, and another thing I think people don't like about... <laughs> I'll tell you what, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what. He ran. You tell him I'll run until my feet catch fire. Uh, 
He was running, uh, running I think with the that other propane thing is, and propane accessories. Yeah. Oh, man, it's coming back. Futurama is, is back, by the way, uh, by the time you watch this. I know. It's so weird, man. I know. It's like, it's like, the, it's like the year 2000 all over again. It's like, what's happening? What? Yeah. Shut up and take my money. Don't tell me to happen. I saw it happen. <laughs> um, so I think a lot of people don't like Ezra Miller either. Ezra Miller's got a weird punchable face. He looks like he's got multiple punches on, yeah, on like, his face. Like, what do you do with a jawline like his? It's like he wakes up to chew on raw walnuts, man. Like, that's what he does for, I know. for pastime. He's, he's got a, he's got a jaw like a brick face. Mouth. Like a brick fence. <laughs> brick face, brick face, brick fence. I don't know. Uh, oh, man. You ever see those like Indiana Jones movies where they have the Temple of Doom and they have like the skulls on the wall? His would fit perfectly as like a centerpiece. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just saw that yesterday. Dude, did you notice that there's uh, severed arms all in the background of the Temple of Doom and like thumbs and fingers? Like it was something you never see on video, but in 4K, yeah. Blu-ray, that thing was pretty gnarly. Yeah. Or. Or when you watch it like I did on a 125 inch projection, you're like, what the hell is happening there? I know. We got to, yeah. But anyway, uh, he runs and is able to go back in time. But as he, like we said, as he's running, he's able to scrub through time. He can actually like see like the events happening yeah. around him, much like Matthew McConaughey in his bookshelf. Uh, yeah, he's like in a Coliseum, except, you know, in a Coliseum in a ball, as opposed to, was it McConaughey was in, was in a, what's that thing called? Oh, a Tesseract. It's the same thing the event I've been after. What is that blue square? Oh, Tesseract. Tesseract. That's what he's in. Oh, Tesseract. Um, and he, square. he realizes that he can kind of go back in time by a bit, and he talks to Bruce, uh, and he says, hey, well, I can go back in time. I can change things. You also destroy everything. And this is Ben Affleck, by the way, Bruce Wayne Batman. Do you want to live your past? Live your life? Don't let your tragedy define you. What if it's supposed to define me? Your tragedy made you a hero. That also made me a lot. And I was actually kind of yeah. sad because as Bruce Wayne was telling him not to mess with time, um, very uh, very unconvincingly, by the way, um, <laughs> as, we'll, as we'll learn, uh, Bruce Wayne does know how to talk to people about time travel. Um, he drives yeah. away in his Mercedes, but... There's also uh, the the subplot where uh, Barry is uh, trying to see this way, uh, this uh, reporter girl Iris West who comes to his house to talk to him about his dad and the and the impending mm-hmm. uh, parole trial about his dad. And then this is where we learn that Barry can phase through matter. He is so fast that he can walk through matter. Yeah, <laughs> actually. I actually li- that's the thing this movie is actually funny because I saw it in theaters because he, he this girl he liked is going to come visit unexpectedly so he cleans up the ha- the room so fast yeah. that he just jams everything in all the closets right so the room looks clean and as he's talking like yeah. everything just explodes around him which I guess is a metaphor for this movie once you really yeah, think it's like about everything's it. that snake in a can it's yeah. like whoop <laughs> yeah. yeah well I'm, I'm I'm a pretty tidy person able to phase through matter so he can walk through doors and, and go underneath things uh, because he's so fast he can actually and not just that he can phase objects through matter yes he's able to grab them and then phase them through things <laughs> you know and he's like oh let me get you a beer and he really doesn't have a beer so he phases in somewhere and gets the beer and he phases back out and the beer just explodes in his hands yeah <laughs> Dude, <laughs> I laughed out loud man. that was pretty great yeah, so like, of course they follow <laughs> yeah Oh, uh, it's, 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 I, I don't know if, if you haven't seen this movie, yet, go see it. It's actually a good movie and it hasn't even like hit it. Yeah, and it's, yet. Now you can stream it at home. Yeah. So go watch it at home. Yeah. He's uh and he works for the crime lab and, and then like, he's always trying to think of ways to get his dad out, but his dad doesn't, his dad wants him to live his life regardless of, uh, what's been happening. Um, yeah. but anyway, I, Iris says uh, something about, you know, going back and changing things or changing something small. Uh, oh, yeah, that's what he did. He was going to change something small. He was going to put another can of beans or tomatoes in his mom's... Uh, yeah, tomatoes. Tomatoes in his mom's uh, grocery thing, in her grocery cart, so she wouldn't have to send dad out to get him again. And that's what he does. He goes back and dresses like yeah. a trucker for some reason <laughs> in this scene uh, and, then, and does that. And then as he phases back in to go to the present, this evil-looking dude is also time-traveling with Oh, him. man, he meets... 
he meets what I've dubbed Pop Rocks. Yeah, Pop Pop Rock Man comes out of nowhere and just kind of like by God, him, you know, <laughs> pushes him out of the chronosphere. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one burst his bubble. Yeah, Rick James. He just Rick Jameses him out of the the thing. He's like, <laughs> he's like, yo, couch. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then he ends up in, um, a few years early in, in college era, Barry. And, uh, actually this yeah. also, this also, uh, I got to put a note. I lost all my pens in the restructure. Uh, he had to push him out. <laughs> the re- the restructure, hey, just, just like the DCU, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, life man. imitating art. Yeah. <laughs> What's his name? Uh, Henry Cavill back. No, he's not. Uh. <laughs> uh, no, he's not. No, he's not. So much. This no, is he's not, guys. Okay. Canceled. <laughs> canceled. We canceled that one. Oh. Sorry for the tease, but he's gone. <laughs> yeah. Um. But anyway, oh. uh. So he he pushes him out of the chronosphere, and he he ends up back in like college time, so a few years earlier than the present day, and he sees his mom alive and well, and uh, everything is like peachy. And his mom's like, oh, you yeah. look good, or you look a little older, you look this and that, and he's like really sad. And then he sees, we'll call him Doucheberry, who's who's present-day Barry. Dude. <laughs> and he's like dancing. That's a like, good name his, for him. Yeah. And he's like, oh, you know who he reminds me of? Remember Bulk and Skull from uh, Power Rangers? Do you remember like those two losers? Like they were oh, they, they were the dude, ones always yes. trying to thwart the teen storylines. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those guys are such douchebags. Yeah. So he was a real douchebag, Barry. And then uh, Flash Barry comes and like pushes him out of the way so like he can talk to him and says he's going to have powers one day. But then he realizes that uh, yeah. he actually has to go and get powers this day. This is the day that he got his powers. So he sends uh, this douchebarry. <laughs> Doucheberry sound delicious, by the way. <laughs> or, or, or the opposite. <laughs> Why does that sound like something you can go... I'm just gonna go frolic it about yeah! the world. Dingleberry. <laughs> oh, I guess dingleberries are the front. Maybe doucheberries are the no, the other way around. Do, <laughs> dingleberries are the back. Douche maybe doucheberries are the front. It's <laughs> <laughs> a merry eat merry world, buddy. Oh yuck! Why is this a pain? Um, but no, any. I don't either. <laughs> Anyway, he brings Doucheberry to the the crime lab where he got his powers. And now, unlike uh, our typical renditions of the Flash, we actually haven't seen how he got his powers. So it turns out he was an intern at this crime lab. Lightning struck, and then he was hit by lightning mm-hmm. and chemicals at the same time, as you do, I suppose. But anyway, yeah, uh, yeah. this is what and, happens. Yeah, him and him and Barry, him uh, Barry and Doucheberry uh, of the past are arguing, and then somehow the lightning is able to strike. Our Barry go through him into Doucheberry and it steals his powers and also knocks Barry's tooth out for some reason. Uh, yeah, that was a little bit of a yeah, what the heck, man? Yeah, and he just super glues it back in, by the way, so we don't have to look at a toothless Barry throughout the movie. Uh, <laughs> which by the way, I believe is the most damage that 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 our Barry uh, uh succumbs to in this movie. And I'll get back to to damage the Barry, yeah, gets. well, because he can heal. Right? Yeah, he can heal he really can fast heal unless, normally. Unless he gets I guess, really I guess damaged. Teeth, you just can't heal teeth. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, humans don't aren't known to grow more teeth, right? So uh, yeah, that's true. We're not sharks, man. Not yet. Not yet. Um, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> yeah. So I at some point. Uh, so okay. So he actually lost his powers. Our Barry lost loses his powers, and Doucheberry, <laughs> Doucheberry Crunch. Mm-hmm. Gets his power, so he's learning how to phase. Oh, and then there, there's like that moment to the the what do you call it? the Lone Ranger song where Doucheberry's running through town and he sets everything on fire, <laughs> you know, and, and he's like oh, yeah. breaking everything. <laughs> he returns home, yeah, and, and he's you, like, what you, you just see like Barry do? in his apartment, like seeing like like fires and explosions in the background, and then like Barry like Doucheberry phases <laughs> through the floor and he's like naked and then he comes back without any clothes. Yeah, he burnt all yeah. he keeps burning all his clothes off or phasing out of his clothes. Yeah. Um, but anyway, they uh, they realize that this is the day that General Zod has taken over. So this is 2013 when General Zod uh, uh, came looking for Superman. Um, now, here's the thing. Man, that was that long ago? Yeah, that was 2013. That was 10 years ago uh, when Man of Steel first came out. 
Jeez, man. The Dark Knight was 2012. Felt like that was like five years ago. Yeah. Uh, oh, God. If you, if you remember the Dark Knight, it had the trailer for Man of Steel on it. Uh, but oh, this guy. Right. Everybody lost their mind when that happened. Yeah. So Barry, Barry knows he has to. Yeah, they thought it was the same universe. It's like, oh, my God. <laughs> Christian Bale and uh, Henry Cavill Superman going to meet. Yeah. But they. Oh, they, that would have been amazing. Yeah, right. Uh, which, by the way, I don't know. Well, we'll talk. But anyway, we'll, we'll get into the, the nitty gritty of this movie. They find out this is the day the General Zod comes. And they say, oh, we got to get the Justice League together. And then that's when we find out that uh, Barry, Doucheberry has roommates, which is all his own crime lab friends. But they're just chilling like in this apartment. And they're talking about like time travel. And they're like, yeah, man, uh, time travel. You know, Eric Stoltz, he was like really great in that. And... <laughs> Like Eric Stoltz, mean oh you, right, you mean Jamie? Man, I'm writing, sorry, yeah, I'm like writing like, my Michael J. Fox. I missed a huge part of this freak. Yeah, and they're like, no, yeah. Like, <laughs> they say Eric Stoltz. Eric Stoltz, he was the guy who they originally hired to play uh, Marty McFly, but they fired him. Eric Stoltz, yeah, um, mm-hmm. in real life, right? That's why I say this is like Last Action Hero, yeah. where in movie world, Sylvester Stallone played the Terminator. So if you remember that. And then some dude even had a Marty yeah. McFly tattoo, and it was yeah, someone else. That. And he's like, "No, it was uh, Marty McFly, not Marty McFly. It was uh." So it just so goes weird. into time travel. No, Michael J. Fox is Michael J. Fox. No, and then yeah. they, they go into like other like things that happen in the world. And they're like, "Well, well, where's Superman? There's no such thing as Superman." And then like, "Well, how about Arthur Curry? Let's call up the Aquaman." And they they call uh, <laughs> they call Boba Fett. <laughs> they call his dad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they call Boba Fett. Hello. Uh, Hello, Uh, Thomas Curry? Yes. Could I speak to Arthur? Is Arthur around? You want to speak to my dog? What? Like, hey, where's Arthur Curry? You want to talk to my dog? (laughs) He's like, I got teeth. (laughs) You want to talk to my dog? He's like, are you married to a princess of the sea? (laughs) Do you accept this rose? Yes. Uh, no. What kind of joke is this? (laughs) You mean a whale? Yeah, and then uh, and then and then they, then they go then they go. Oh, well, what about Batman? And then the girl's like, "I'm Batman." <laughs> He's like, "Wait, what did you just say?" She, she goes, "I'm Batman." That was pretty good. That was pretty good. <laughs> so wait, Batman's real? Like, yeah, but nobody knows who he is. <laughs> but Batman is very real yeah. in this universe. <laughs> so real. Um. <laughs> so so, so so Barry teaches Douche Barry how to use the suit. Uh, he has to be so fast as the ring pops out or whatever. <laughs> and they proceed to Wayne Manor. And then this is Wayne Manor of Tim Burton's yeah. Brat- Batman. And then you actually recognize like all the rooms that he's walking through. The room with all the, the wicker people and the and, yeah. the, and then the, the dining room that he had said he'd never been in before when he was eating with Vicky Vale. And they go inside the kitchen where uh, he was having dinner with Alfred and everybody in, 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 uh, in Vicky Vale, you know. Uh, but he's not there, but he's cl- someone so clearly cool, making man. pasta. And then he proceeds to kick yeah. Barry's ass. But since Doucheberry now has the flash powers, he's able to get faster. But if you remember that first uh, Batman versus Superman, when Batman threw the Batarang at Barry, like at the beginning, he was able to dodge it. The same thing happened here, where Michael oh, yeah. King's Bruce Wayne threw uh, a frying pan. And Barry was able to look at it and get, you know, walk oh. around. <laughs> it was the exact same scene. Yeah. Um, it was awesome. And by the way, like Michael Keaton, like he is so good in this movie. See this movie for Dude, Michael he Keaton. Is, he is my Batman. Yeah. He, and I'm sad because like uh, they canceled Batgirl or whatever that stupid movie was. And he would be, we would have been Batman in it. And this movie didn't apparently yeah, do very well. but that, that like really breaks my heart, man. But Michael Keaton is the best Batman. And and just just, just the way yes, he talks. He talks about you're a time nice. traveler, huh? And he's like, yeah, but it appears to have affected the past yeah. because you're older. Yeah. And he goes, well, you know, it's, it's, you saw in a movie where you know time travel is a straight line, but, you know, maybe it curves like this way. He has, and he's like, he has like dry spaghetti. He's like moving it back and forth. When you go back and change the past, you create a fulcrum. You put yourself on a whole nother strand of spaghetti. New future, new path. It's retrocausal. It goes both ways. Actually, it goes many ways. 
And he goes, well, sometimes it goes like that, and it bends a little bit. But sometimes it cracks. But sometimes there's certain intersections. Because we just yeah. saw a Spider-Verse, and they're talking about canon events. I like the way Michael Keaton did it. Keaton better yeah. with his with his spaghetti, and he got a hot mess. <laughs> yeah, then he just got his dump of spaghetti and threw it on there. He's like, yeah, time, you know, it just it goes like this. And it goes there. It, just, and it comes sometimes up and touch, Sometimes it won't parallel. Sometimes it won't. But then yeah. it just turns into a mess. And they're like, well, you want me to help you find your Superman? He goes, pass, right? And then he doesn't. He doesn't want to help them. He, by the way, he looks yeah. like decrepit in, in Harry right now. Uh, because, but also he revealed a very key uh, piece of information. This Batman won. He's like Gotham City is one of the safest cities in the United States. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he put himself yeah. out of a job. You got a swan song, man. Oh, it's so nice. Uh, and he doesn't want to help them. And then like we got to use his Batman shit. Right, and I don't know if you caught this, but they go into the front or yeah. backyard, or wherever, and then they go down the same sewer that Batman fell in when the whole thing started. Remember, Christian Bailey fell down the sewer. Yes. Yeah. They're like, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll phase. Dude, when I saw phase, it, I was like, whoa! <laughs> phase through this sewer, would you? And then he phased in, like he's like, oh my god! And this Barry knows that this is um, Doucheberry knows that this this is Michael Keaton's Batman. And he's like, look what I found! And he found the thing that the Joker was on yeah. the, that was on the Joker when he died that laughs the bag. <laughs> yeah, like, it's a bag that laughs. And he finds was, the Batmobile cool. and everything. Uh, so he's tracking. So Barry, the berries are tracking down where Superman could be, and they think, uh, they don't know anything, right? But meanwhile. Batman is mm-hmm. watching them and uh, trying to figure it out thing on his end. And our Barry uh, finds the pen left behind from Alfred. And he goes, you had an Alfred too? I guess things have to have happened. Oh. Yeah, while well, he's sitting and studying. And then that's when Bruce Wayne finds the bat suit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then uh, he puts on the bat suit and he, and he gives them the information. And he's like, and he goes, oh my God, you, you're here. He goes, yeah. I'm Batman. Why, Michael Keaton, he's so good as Batman. Oh, dude. Yeah, and then that's when they find out that... Uh, boy, yo, yo. I was like, Batman! <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, Batman is probably in Siberia because, you know, things are different. So they go out there and, man, it's awesome seeing Batman kick people's asses again and, like, stopping and, and like, like he always had these quirks where, like, remember uh, with Vicky Vale where, like, he had the... The grappling hook, he's like, how much do you weigh? She's like, I don't know, about 108. And then the grappling hook like stopped. Like that happened a lot in this one. Yeah. How much do you weigh? Or like, or like he was going to take off in the grappling hook with, with uh, Barry, but like Barry like hugged him. Because it's, you know, because they're going to grapple up. Yeah. And he just looks at him. He's, he's like, like hmm. then he grabs him and they fly up. Like, man, this guy is so cool. <laughs> that was pretty good. They're playing the 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 the, the Danny oh, Elfman. Do, 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 do. And remember, we did Batman Returns for uh for our, our Christmas special. Remember, Batman Returns Christmas. is a Christmas movie. Michael Keaton is the yeah. Best watch Batman. it. Watch our take on it. Yeah. Um. So they're able to go in here. And by the way, so the uh, they're fighting the Soviets. The Soviets are still around. And Batman is just Arkham Asylum and like beating all these guys up and like you know dodging bullets and stuff, <laughs> really just is. kicking ass. Yeah, he is he is going full out Batman. He is the Batman of our dreams in this movie. Um, yeah. And uh, Barry gets shot in the foot. No, Douche Barry gets shot in the foot. He's like, I didn't know I could get shot. <laughs> and that's the first no, he got shot through the calf. Yeah, so that's the first. Or the knee? Injury. I think it was the knee. The knee. Yeah, he just he just like he yeah. did some moves. Oh, <laughs> this is the scene. Where they're uh, walking through the hallway, and some old like you know Soviet like scientist like sees like 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 Batman in, in the Flash like coming up, and then Michael Keaton he's dressed oh, up like yeah. Batman, and he's like, Phew. he like lunges at him. The guy doesn't like move. There's a pump fake on him. <laughs> yeah, he's. <"Phew." laughs> He just keeps like lunching at him. <laughs> I think he eventually like pushes him or that something. That's pretty good. I'll handle Mr. Brony. Oh, oh, oh man. my god, he's so cool. And then that's when they find Batgirl. It's a lot uh, of movie, dude. Not Batgirl. It's a lot of movie. It is, but it's good. That's when they find uh Supergirl. Uh, yeah, no, not in a not in a bad way at all. Like th- this movie satisfies your need to see Batman, the Flash done well. 
you know, and you're just like, you know, I could use more of this. Yeah. Yeah. They rescue, they rescue Supergirl, but she's been in a, in a big chamber hiding her. And like, this is awesome. Like when they try to escape and like, they're going like lower in the Soviets, like shooting like the big safes above them and stuff like they, it's, it's a, it's, it's a crazy fight out. Um, and, yeah, uh, they eventually escape. They, and by the way, they ride around in the bat wing. Well, bat, bat girl like flies, you know, which is pretty cool. Then that's the, the vintage bat. Wing. Dude, that was so freaking cool. I know. They just kept using it over and over again. Uh, well, and did we get to that scene yet where, where Batman, you know, him and Barry are falling out and like, or and Batman's like, just get ready. There's parachutes where you're at. And he just falls out. They're like, did he have a shoot? They're like, no. Yeah. He used his memory, uh, his memory cape to like fly down. But yeah, that's how they, f- f- everything that Batman does, you know, Batman does. He does in this movie. Seriously. I'm Batman. Yeah. You know, it's just, oh my God. It's so cool. Just watching all these guys geek out to Batman stuff and the music and everything. If only, if only they could hear the music. <laughs> if only Batman knew of his, yeah, how I epic his theme song was. Batman used to walk around with a little hip speaker. <laughs> he probably does. <laughs> or does he does that with his mouth? <laughs> uh, <laughs> That'd be great. Yeah. Um. So so now Barry do, now they're at bat, at the Batwing and. Uh, Super Supergirl doesn't want to help them because she because they were you know the humans already locked her away for for as long as it is, and uh, she goes to go yeah. you know confront Zod and see what's going on over there. Meanwhile, they're working to give our Barry his powers back, and they do it like Frankenstein style, where they like they they have like a what do you call it? They have like a kite and everything, and they have the chemicals exploding on them, and uh, oh Super, yeah, yeah, Supergirl goes to talk to Zod. And uh, she, I don't know if she talks to Zod here, but she does realize Zod is like trying, is mowing down through the military because they are crypt, they're Kryptonian. They actually have Kryptonian powers. Yeah. You know? They get and, the sun. And also they have uh, shields. So they can actually, what do you call it? They can Dude, actually. Yeah, uh, those shields are crazy. Yeah. They, they're, they're at, the, the Kryptonians are at their highest powers and. <laughs> you know, you you could tell where the story is going, uh, pretty much. Um, so she comes back to help Batman in, in the Flash, and it turns out that they can't get they can't they don't have enough energy. They don't have twelve point one gigawatts to give or whatever to give uh, Barry his powers. <laughs> gigawatts. Back. Yeah. So she flies him up into the sky to get yeah. struck directly by lightning, and he's already covered in chemicals, and he gets all crispy. Yeah. But then he gets his powers back, and he's fine. So. This is where yeah. uh, Batman's like, you want to get nuts? Come on, let's get nuts. <laughs> you know, like, he's well, going, like well, he, we forgot, we skipped a little piece here. Yeah. Because um, I think before this all goes down, um, Barry himself, or, or Doucheberry, actually overhears um, Batman and Alpha Barry, I'll call him, yeah. discussing why he has to do stuff. You know, and, you know, Doucheberry hears like, oh, his mom died. He's like, oh, now I get it, you know. Yeah, and you know, the whole time he's being a douchebag and, 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 and Alpha Berry's just like Alpha Berry. Alpha Berry tastes better than, du- better than Doucheberry. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> he's, Alpha Berry. He's always giving him brain. a hard time, you know, the whole time. He's like, you don't know what you got. You don't know how good your life is. Huh. Uh, even though he's always like laughing yeah. and calling him like a griefer, or a bunch of weird like future words or whatever. <laughs> um, yeah. But... But he gets his powers back, and then they the, then they all agree to go fight Zod, uh, Supergirl, the the Berries, and the Batman. They form this this quasi Justice League. You were our leader of the Justice League. Uh, now now you can yeah. come back. So okay, so now it's just all out war between this this quasi Justice League with Michael Keaton's Batman, Supergirl, yeah. and then the two Berries. And uh, <laughs> that just sounds stupid. His name is so dumb. It's like the Flash. His name is Barry. I know, Flash. Flashberry Crunch. <laughs> Flashberry Crunch. Guaranteed to rip up the roof of your mouth. Yeah. What is that button? <laughs> uh, I think that's, I think Family so Guy dumb. ruined Captain Crunch for me and South Park ruined Family Guy for me. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's a vicious cycle. Yeah. So, so, so Batman wants to do air support in the bat wing. Oh, and, and uh, Doucheberry is wearing the Batman return suit spray painted 
red. Yes, he is. He's red, yeah. <laughs> and he hacksaws the ears off and puts like tape, like, like what do you call it? Like, <laughs> you see when he turned to his left? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> turned, it's the mask just like gets a little funny looking on him. It looked <laughs> like Jim Carrey in Liar Liar when he taped his face. Yeah. That was pretty good. Um, so Michael Shannon also spread some, the actor who plays Zod <laughs> also spread some shade on this movie saying mm-hmm. that like, Oh, you know, when I made the yeah, first one, it was like a big character study of who Zod was, but this one was just a paycheck. It was, it's not your movie freaking my, general Zod. <laughs> like it doesn't matter. Yeah. You're just showing up. Yeah. Man. It's okay. But anyway, general Zod, um, He's, what was me a million dollars? Yeah. Right. <laughs> So I bought a new car. What else would you do? But anyway, uh, yeah. we find uh, out. You know, I'm going to look up how much he was paid for this. I'm sure we can find it. Yeah, it doesn't even matter. Whether whether he, he was paid more than $30,000 for this, for this role. Uh, that I can tell you. Oh, yeah. So he was paid more than than uh, than minimum wage employee makes in a year. So quiet, Shannon. Don't spread shade over the movie because you didn't have as many. Have as much of an arc in a time travel movie that's not about you. You know? Anyway. Seriously. I back to back to this movie and not our tirade on Michael Shannon complaining that he makes too much money. It's like that time Hugo Weaving complained that he made too much <laughs> money uh in the Transformers movies. <laughs> and where's he been? <laughs> so crazy, man. Mr. Anderson. Oh <sighs> but anyway, uh where were we? Okay, okay. So so we find out that General Zod actually killed Superman, and in this world, they're looking for Supergirl. So it's like a big fight, and uh, Batman does air support, and they're and they're they're fighting the Kryptonians, and the Kryptonians are just like like jerks, like. And then Barry Doucheberry's trying to learn how to use his powers, yeah. but he can't quite figure it out. He makes too much static electricity or something, and he just kind of like blows himself up a few times and keeps getting jacked up. Yeah, does not a discharge. He doesn't know how to discharge right. And then uh, the other Barry just keeps on like, hey, you just got to do it like that. And you know what? Little tweaks that they're making affects everything, you know? And it's kind of like a foreshadowing of the next yeah. few minutes of this movie here. But, uh, you know, the 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 Kryptonians, like, like, okay, Batman actually destroys a couple of ships by crashing them into each other. And I think that this was an homage yeah. to Spider-Man when Michael Keaton was talking to his men. And remember, they were they were uh, they were taking apart the alien tech at the very beginning of the movie, and the guy had like a crowbar, and he's trying to pull like things out of the eight, like the Chitari alien tech. And the guy goes, "Oh, oh no, yeah, no, Spider-Man you can't, you can't use human stuff. You got to use their stuff, right?" So then they got yeah. like a, got like an alien crowbar to get it out. Remember? Yeah. Yeah. So that <laughs> if only Michael Keaton had taken yes, he Michael did. Keaton's own device, because the only ship he was able to take out was with two Kryptonian ships crashing into each other. Another ship. Yeah, another ship. And I was thinking, why didn't they use the uh, kryptonite? Kryptonite hasn't been invented yet in this universe. It was invented because the world destroyers exploded. So they have to destroy the world builders before yeah. they can get the kryptonite. Um, so it really was a no-win scenario. And and like Batman's ship, or the, the Batwing gets jacked up and he does kamikaze on the on, on General Zod's ship. And, yeah. and it just you know, he just oh, Batman. He crashes into it and blows They're up. Like, no. Yeah, and then General Zod kills Supergirl. <laughs> They're like, oh no. Yeah, you're like, what? It just went Man, to when hell. That started happening. I was just like, in the world that am I watching? Yeah, everything literally went to hell in like that minute. And they're like, well, we just got to go try it again. Uh, okay. <laughs> and then the two berries go back in time, <laughs> rephase, and they they convince Batman not to not to crash into the thing. It's shielded. Don't do it. And he's like, okay. <laughs> you know. And then uh, <laughs> like, oh, I'm old. I don't care. Yeah. And then Zod and uh, and uh, Supergirl get into a new fight, <laughs> right? Now this is when, yeah. when Batman actually does like kick some more ass, but then like one of the uh, the Kryptonians break the Batwing, but he's able to escape, and he just keeps putting like bombs on it on him. He just keeps putting bombs on yeah, the Kryptonian his, dude on his neck and stuff. Yeah, he dude, just one so after cool. another just keeps blowing him up, blowing him up, blowing him up, <laughs> and then uh, eventually uh, he gets the best of him, blows him up. Oh, he, oh, so he gets the best of him, injures Batman, and then another one blows up on the back of his head and knocks him out, and then Batman. Yeah. By the way, did you catch the homage to this? Because Barry catches him as he falls. This is like the same way Darth Vader died. We can't bring you back, can we? You already did. You already did. 
ended. With uh, Luke Skywalker. And he goes, yeah. I'm so sorry I couldn't save you. Yeah, I know. We, we were talking about that earlier. You already have. And Michael Keaton's Bruce Wayne dies. Like, oh, like, oh no. man. <laughs> you already have. That's terrible. He saved he's Batman. And then uh, Supergirl dies again. <laughs> like, again. They, they just again. keep dying. Because they're real. They, like, that's why they said the, uh, the only way to have stopped Zod in that war was to snap his neck. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, everyone was giving uh, that's crazy. You know, Zod hell for that, but like there really was like a lot that they couldn't have done. Uh, the way that Henry Cavill yeah. stopped Zod was he destroyed their machine, and oh no, he found another Kryptonian uh, thing, the the Fortress of Solitude one in Antarctica or whatever, and he threw it at it or whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh, and uh, what's his name, Russell? Oh Crow, man, Russell Crowe. I have not came. seen that movie in so long. Yeah, a lot happened in order for them to stop Zod that they just weren't prepared for in this one. Wow. Because they didn't know where the Fortress of Solitude was. They didn't, you know, Kryptonite hadn't invented yet. So I get it. I understand why it was a no-win scenario for these guys. Yeah. And that's also probably why uh, Barry got kicked out of the Chronosphere originally because the future didn't exist after that point. Oh. But anyway. So, Whoa. Uh, yeah, right? And, and then, you know, they keep going back and trying to change the fight. And then Douchebarry gets a freaking, like, like giant shank stuck in his arm. <laughs> As he's, as he's running. Yeah. And, and, and you see it looks so visceral. <laughs> he has like a freaking Klingon batlet stuck yeah, in his arm. Yeah, he uppercuts. Well, dude, he uppercuts one of the crypt, Kryptonians and you're like, oh, dead yeah, for oh, sure. It looks so painful because like, uh, you know, uh, Prime Barry or Alpha Barry is like, oh, we got to pull it out. He's like, then he finds out, like like we said, Michael Keaton, if you use your tech against them, uh, it, it hurts them. So he was able to uppercut a couple of people. He's like, oh, man, yeah. I can use this. And then they kept dying, and then they kept going back to the chronosphere. He's like, "Oh, well, we could change this," and they kept dying in the, yeah. like, the chronosphere. And then you can actually see like the universe and the worlds built. literally start colliding. Yeah, they start colliding, start breaking up around them, and then our Barry just sort of sits there and takes five. And meanwhile, the other Barry keeps coming like in and out, in and out, in and out. He's like, "We can keep doing." And he comes up more jacked up every time. Is he's got a big scar in his face? Yeah, and his like suits all getting jacked up, and his uh, costume is turning blacker and blacker. <laughs> it's turning back into you know, like a like a black yeah, suit, like, like it was. Like, like when he's it turning in, he's turning into more pop rocks. Yeah, turning into more pop rocks, and then that's when like even the the what the pop rock man shows up. <laughs> And he goes, okay. yeah, well, I mean, I guess bef- while this is happening, before Pop Rock Man shows up, we're seeing all these worlds colliding, right? So we're seeing the, the, the universe, the multiverse. We get to see, we see the uh, multi- Nick Cage as <laughs> Nick Cage is Superman fighting uh, the giant spider, <laughs> which, by the way, that made the movie for Did you know <laughs> that the giant spider was a was like a, a pet project of Warner Brothers? Like they really wanted a pet spider, a giant. They wanted a a hero to fight a giant spider, right? And it was supposed to be Nick Cage's Superman versus um, Brainiac as a giant spider, and that's what we saw, right? But since that movie never got made, what? do you know where they put the giant spider assets? Lord of the Rings. Will Smith in Wild Wild West fought the giant spider at the end. Whoa! That was it! Did. <laughs> Dude! Record scratch. Yeah. I had those guys. I remember going to McDonald's and getting those things. Yeah. <laughs> but man, Nick Cage, seeing Nick Dude. Cage. But not yeah. only Nick Cage, we saw Christopher Wee, we saw the classic Supergirl, and we saw Adam West Batman. And yeah, it, we saw a classic Flash. Yeah, and you hear him like, okay, jump, here we go. <laughs> um, yeah. But that's when Pop Rocks Barry also comes out. And, uh, and we'll call him, I already called him Barry because yeah. clearly he was, he was going to be the Flash from the future. And he's like, I've been waiting for this moment. Yeah, I put and you apparently here. his name is Dark Flash. Dark Flash or whatever. You have to stop. It stops when they fixed it! Uh, and then, and then uh, Douche Flash shows up. Douche Barry shows up and he's like, hey, you yeah. have the same scars as me. He goes... <laughs> He's like, you're not me, are you? He's like, Ugh. you want to see how I got these scars? <laughs> you know, I got these scars. <laughs> and then he, then he goes, eating pop rocks. Yeah, after like a brief, like you know, madman monologue, he's like, oh man, you probably rehearsed that. <laughs> and by the way, he's all weird and drooly. Yeah, kind of, yeah. I'm like, okay, kind of looks like Mark Hamill a bit. Was it play? I, I need to go. I, was, I think I Googled yeah. who played him. He kind of looks like Mark Hamill when he looks older. But anyway, 
uh, he tries to kill uh, Primeberry, but ends up kill, uh, killing, uh, what do you call it? Um, Doucheberry, who, by the way, uh, looks completely yeah, jacked up. So Doucheberry jumps in front and sacrifices himself. <gasps> Much like the, uh, the, the to- uh, Tobey Maguire uh, Spider-Man there in another multiversal story. Oh. Uh, but anyway, so that disappears that, and that breaks the world. And then Barry decides what he has to do is kill his mom, in essence, and take the bean, <laughs> the, the tomatoes out of the cart. So he has like a sad moment where he has to deal with an 80s, 80s mom and like, you know, like, I need a hug. He's like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, you look like you need a hug. I'm like, hey, man. All right, it was 80s mom. I, I don't know. I'm an idiot. I'm, I was watching it going. Why the hell is this woman like damn near seeing this guy's face and not realizing it's her son? I'm like, all right. Yeah, he was a little Duh. kid at the time. It was 80s mom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so she just, she just, she just thought she knew him, you know, like it was him in the future or something. Where I feel like yeah. I saw this in another movie. I can't, I'm drawing a blank on which one it was where was it the Adam Project or whatever where they had to deal with a bunch of like kids' version. It was him as a was kid. Was it also. the Adam Project? Uh, another movie with multiple Ryan Reynolds is. And time travel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to think, how did the chromos? Oh, you you know what though? You know our time travel, uh, our time travel, uh, time is a river um, analogy that we all. Oh yeah, yeah. Our, 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 maybe those are the maybe those yeah. are the planets of the universe <laughs> coming together oh. in the river. <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll put it's a, a graphic up there and, and describe it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway. That was uh, I don't even remember that other movie. Either. I've been watching lots of Parks and Rec, man. The Chris Pratt, he ran away with his career. Dude, me too, man. Yeah. How weird. I know, right? But I, but it's in. 4- I've legit just been turning seasons and watching them. It's in 4K now, and like, and and my 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 uh, my uh, internet provider is like, you're using too much internet. I'm like, what? Running out of internet? You're like, you're like, I thought this was America. The internet know, is right? free. They're like, we know you cord cutted. We know you cord cutted. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> where was I? Uh, so Barry decides to let his mom die by putting the tomatoes back in the thing. And has a has a sad moment with 80s mom. Uh, and then he realizes he looks at the bean or the, the cans of tomatoes and says, Oh, I can just move the cans of tomatoes higher so the security camera will be able to see my dad's face on it. So he moves all the all the tomatoes at a yeah. higher spot. Well, the thing is, we don't well we don't see this until you know we're we're in the court when we come back you to know, present literally present present, present present time. Yeah, we come back to present 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 yeah. time, and that's when they 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 they, they show him and uh, the dad in the probation. They're like, thanks to Bruce Wayne's like super technology, which ironically has bat logos everywhere. <laughs> I'm like, whoops, no, that didn't happen. But I can imagine yeah. him <laughs> like screwing up and putting a Batman watermark on the thing. <laughs> If he does it to everybody. Uh, but anyway. <laughs> He's great. He's like, oh, man. <laughs> Damn it, Alfred. <laughs> I know. But, but anyway, we'll talk. But anyway, uh, using this new technology, we're able to see that clearly he was at the supermarket and not murdering his, his wife. Ah, uh, what happened? Okay, so so since the camera shows that he didn't ki- that he was clearly not around to kill his his wife, he's acquitted and is, is let off. So Be- Barry's happy. Yep. Barry's uh, Barry's girlfriend says, "Oh, look, your yeah, dad happily you're after." Yeah, your your dad is safe. And then he gets a call from Bruce Wayne. <laughs> and he's like, "Hey, Barry, you did a good job. Yeah. I'm glad your dad came." But don't worry, I'm pulling up. And you, you see, like you see the super Mercedes pulling, the super Mercedes sports car pulling up, and all the all yeah. the reporters coming. And like, oh no, it's Bruce! Oh, it's Bruce! And they, they pull up, and then the door opens. <laughs> And then uh, Barry's like happy to see like Bruce Wayne again. He's like, I'm so happy to see you. And then the, the reporters like clear out, and it's freaking George Clooney. <laughs> I know. I'm like, what? Yeah, I George what? freaking Clooney. And Barry's like, who the f- is this? Hey, Barry. <laughs> <laughs> the the PGF bomb right there. Yeah, it, was, it works. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes up to George Clooney. He's like, you're not Batman. <laughs> he goes, Barry, what's wrong with you? <laughs> That's how the movie ends with his tooth <laughs> falling out again. He loses his tooth. He loses yeah. his tooth again. <laughs> and then we enter a very James Gunn yeah. 
and yeah, so that's, credit sequence that's of, 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 a, of, a, of a dog falling yeah. from the hospital at the beginning, but from the dog's point of view. And he looked very happy to, to be falling and almost catching burritos in his mouth. And then we come up on yeah. the post-credit, post-credit sequence where uh, Barry is hanging out with Aquaman, who apparently is always this Aquaman in every reality somehow. But this yeah. Aquaman is He's very just drunk all the time, very drunk, and falls asleep in a puddle. And he's willing to sell his Atlantean jewelry for one more beer. Uh, and then this is Aquaman Rover Turk <laughs> in the, the Aquaman of Aquaman verse. By the way, this movie was directed by yeah. Andy Muschietti, who's also known for the It's One and Two. The guy who directed Aquaman, oh, uh, directed uh, is James Wan, who directed Saw and the Insidious movies. So uh, very horror, oh, very high horror pedigree. By the way, this movie, like we talked about, Doucheberry being completely like jacked up. Lots of body horror. It was actually kind of horrific. Seeing, yeah, like what happened to Barry. And I think, uh, yeah, it was gnarly, man. Very, very visceral of uh, Barry getting jacked up like that. <sighs> but anyway, like I said, I, I liked it. I really liked this movie. I'm gonna agree, man. Do you want to start off with the grade? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Here we go. I'm gonna give it an A. The Flash is a legitimate. Be careful what you wish for. Superhero movie with lots of action, heart, and even horror at times. Here we see the Justice League in peak form, and it gives the titular character an opportunity to look back instead of forward, as well as giving Michael Keaton's Batman one more time to shine. <sighs> this movie, Michael Keaton. Nice man. Yeah, I'm gonna give this one. What's up? Michael Keaton, man. So good. Yeah, I know. Freaking amazing. Well, uh, so, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to give it a, a pretty high grade. I'm going to give this one a B plus. And I just, this movie was a B plus mainly because I needed a little more, more fit and finish. But apart from that, I mean, the movie was stylized. It was, it set out to do something and it achieved that something. This thing had twists right from the get go. And my favorite part was that during all the trailers that we saw, not once did you get a, any kind of hint that Doucheberry would actually be the berry who has the powers first. You know, like you you expect it to be. Yeah, Alpha you know it, that that little twist. There was great. There, there's a there's a trope in superhero movies where there's the movie where he loses his powers, but this movie, yeah, it did that trope, but in a unique way where he lost his powers, but he also got his powers at the same time. You know, like the superhero origin movie. So this movie also was a turn and play yeah. in a superhero origin movie as well as the superhero sequel movie, which is always the second one where he loses his powers or throws away his, his suit. Yeah, exactly, man. And and not just that, we got to see Nick freaking Cage <laughs> as Superman. That right there. Cherry on top, baby. I mean, yeah, Tim Burton was supposed to play... Uh, no, Tim Burton was his direct Superman Live starring... Uh, Nicolas Cage, and also Bruce Wayne, uh, Michael Keaton, was supposed to reprise his role in that movie as well. Um, and uh, it didn't quite work out. Uh, but this movie did, and you know, I was thinking about it too. Wonder Woman uh, 1984 was also a be careful what you wish for superhero movie in which uh, it was like a monkey's paw tale. I don't know if you saw that, but that was weird as shit. Yeah. That movie. <laughs> it was, man. There's a... Uh, I don't there, know what the hell went off that. I don't know either. That was actually, to me, that was the weird, that was the weirdest, one of the weirdest superhero movies. There's a, a How It Should Have Ended YouTube video where, um, where, uh, because so if you see that movie, Chris Pine, uh, he's not, he's Chris Pine as we see him, but he's actually using someone else's body uh, throughout that movie because he's like a ghost or something. So yeah, the, the, throughout the movie, he looks like somebody oh. else, right? Like in, in in reality, yeah, yeah. And then in the how it should have ended was, um, so weird. yeah, Wonder Woman and Chris Pine, but with someone else's body, uh, some other guy, some other handsome face guy. We're about to have sex, right? But in the movie, they do Super have sex. Weird, man. But in the how it should have ended, uh, they stop and they look at each other and they say, "Hey, we don't know whose body this is. Maybe we should wait and see if he consents." And then they cut to the uh, the Inside Out world where he's in there with all the uh, with all the emotions. And he's like, I consent! I consent! <laughs> so weird. So weird. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, you know, check out how it should have ended. They got a lot of the twists and turns in there. My favorite was the why didn't Gandalf use the yeah. eagles to get to Mordor? Um, 
But anyway, that has been our hot take on The Flash. Remember to like, share, subscribe. Check us out on Twitter, Facebook, wherever you get your stuffs. That's the best way I can say it. By the way, Twitter, check us out on X, yeah. Facebook, <laughs> wherever you get your stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Check us out on 1X. Don't add two other Xs or you will get something else. Don't add a space before that. You will get something else. Uh, what other has X on it? And then don't add a min after that. You will get something know. else. <laughs> oh, God. Don't add files after that. You will get something else. Get sued by Disney? <laughs> yeah. Hey, wait. X Files is Disney also. Ooh. But anyway, uh, that has been our hot take on The Flash. I'm your host, Mark Rubokawa, joined once again by Mr. A.O. Panetta on Club S Movies Podcast. We will catch you next time. <laughs> <laughs>